Hello, welcome to the series of video lectures on object oriented programming with C++. In last video lecture, we have discussed one of the important concepts that is abstraction. In today's video lecture, we are going to discuss the important operator, scope resolution operator. Now, as we have seen that any class may have two different type of members. One is data members and another is member functions. The data members in the class specifies the properties or characteristics of that class and the member functions specifies the behavior of that class. The abstraction refers to the act of representing the important properties of a class without including their background details. What does it mean? This means that when we define a class, define kare, kisi class ke liye jitne bhi data members ho sakte hain, ek samay par jitne important data members honge ya properties honge, sirf unhe include kiye jaye. Jo important properties na ho, unhe class define karte samay include karne ki zorat nahi hai. Unhe aapko specify karne ki zorat nahi hai. और साथ में उन डेटा मेंबर्स और मेंबर फंक्शन के लिए उनकी बैकग्राउंड डिटेल भी स्पेसिफाई करने की जरूरत नहीं है इफ यू आर गोइंग टू इंप्लीमेंट द एब्स्ट्रैक्शन फॉर अ क्लास हमें दोनों ही मेंबर्स के लिए एब्स्ट्रैक्शन अचीव करना चाहिए डेटा मेंबर्स के लिए भी एब्स्ट्रैक्शन अचीव करना चाहिए और मेंबर फंक्शंस के लिए भी एब्स्ट्रैक्शन अचीव करना चाहिए लेट अस टेक द एग्जांपल ऑफ द स्टूडेंट क्लास इफ वी आर गोइंग टू इंप्लीमेंट द एब्स्ट्रैक्शन फॉर डेटा मेंबर्स देन फॉर अ स्टूडेंट there may be different different type of members let's say roll number then name age percentage father's name mobile number and so on all these are the properties or characteristics which characterizes the student class yadi hame lagta hai class define karte samay sirf roll number name age or percentage are the important properties that should be included while defining the class student lekin father's name mobile number or etc jo bhi properties hai wo utni important nahi hai ya unhe abhi mujhe include karne ki zarurat nahi hai so we must have to reject all these properties in properties ko mujhe class define karte samay include nahi karna hai i will include just the important properties only so the first part of the abstraction specifies that out of all the properties or characteristics include only those properties which are important so out of all i'll include roll number name age and percentage only aur jitni dusri properties hai unhe main abhi include nahi karunga so let us define the class so class student data security ko object oriented concept mein sabse zyada importance diya gaya hai isiliye data members ko we will define in the private visibility mode so I will open the private visibility mode and in that I will define the important data members roll number name age and percentage and I have rejected the father name mobile number and other etc properties so this is the first part of the abstraction with respect to data members the second half of the abstraction says that we need not to include the background details of the properties or data members so what may be the background details for roll number the background detail may be its value like 1 the value for name the value for age and percentage may be the background details or details for the data members roll number name age and percentage so we will not include these background details like the values of these properties while defining the class we have implemented the abstraction for the data members now it is time to implement the abstraction for the member functions now in case of member function in last class we have discussed that as they specify the behavior there are two aspects what and how each member function may specify what is to be done and how it is to be done while defining the member function and implementing the abstraction for the member function we only must have to specify what is to be done without specifying the background detail which specifies how it is to be done in case of member function what specifies the declaration and how specifies the definition while implementing the member function we only have to specify what is to be done means we just have to declare the function we need not to specify the background details that is how these functions will be implemented we need not to specify the definition of that function let us take the example now the member functions should be defined in the public visibility mode so that they could be accessed from outside the class from the main let's say the first member function is to get the student information which 
just specifies that we have to input the information. So now this function is just specifying what is to be done. This is specifying we have to get or we have to input the student information. Now we need not to specify the background detail that is how it is to be done. Now the another behavior may be put student which will display the information of the student likewise and we will close the class declaration. So this is the example of a class which uses the abstraction. As this class uses the concept of abstraction, this is also known as abstract data type. Now, here in this student class, we have implemented the abstraction for both the data members and the member function. How? While specifying the data members, we have just included the important data members. We have rejected all remaining data members. And the second half of that property that we need not to include the background details of these data members means we haven't included the values of these data members. That is the abstraction with respect to data members. Now, with respect to member functions, we just have to specify what is to be done without specifying how it is to be done that what specifies the declaration. So we have just declared the function specifying that get this information of student and put the information of the student. Now somewhere we have to specify how it is to be done means how the get student will get the information of the student and the put student will print the information of the student. Now for this definition as we have closed the class definition there is no place remaining to define these functions. The only remaining place is the outside class. But if we try to define these functions outside the class, for example, void get student. And if I try to get the information of student like see out, enter student info. And if I in that, in the members roll number, name, age and percentage. Now, what will happen? This will cause an error. Why? Because these members are defined as private and as we know the private members can only be accessed inside the class but here we are trying to access these private data members outside the class in the member function. So this will not be allowed. There should be a solution to that. We have to specify the compiler that though these are the private data members but just allow us to access these private data members outside the class as we are going to implement the abstraction. So here this error will be due to the scope problem because these members are defined as private and they can only be accessed inside the class but we want to access these members outside the class and hence the problem of scope will arise and that problem of scope while accessing the private data members outside the class can be resolved using scope resolution operator. As the name suggests scope resolution, it will resolve the scope of the private data members outside the class. The syntax to use the scope resolution operator is as follows. First of all, we will have to specify the return type, then class name, then scope resolution operator and then member function with argument list and then we have to specify the function body. So this may be the syntax for using the scope resolution operator while defining the member functions outside the class. This scope resolution operator resolves the scope of the private data members outside the class. I cannot define this function like that. So using a scope resolution operator, the definition will be like that. First of all, we have to specify the return type. The return type is void. Then we have to specify the class name, the student. Then we have to use the scope resolution operator and then the name of function that is get student. Now this will work. This is scope resolution operator specifies that the get student function which is defined over here actually belongs to the student class and hence just allow this get student function to access these private data members outside the class. This is resolving the scope of these private data members outside the class. In the similar fashion, now we are going to define the second member function that is the put student. The syntax will be first of all again the return type, then the name of the class that is student, then the scope resolution operator and then the name of function that is put student. 
and this will display the information of the student and I can access the same data members, private data members outside the class that is to print the roll number, name, age and percentage. So we haven't defined the function put student over here. We have just declared this function. This specifies what is to be done, but somewhere we have to specify how it is to be done. And the only remaining place is outside the class. But if we try to access roll number, name, age and percentage outside the class without scope resolution, then the scope problem will arise because the private data members cannot be accessed outside the class. But we want to perform the same. So the scope resolution operator is used and this scope resolution operator specifies that the put student function which is defined outside the class actually belongs to the student class and hence allow the private data members to access outside the class in the put student function. So this is how the scope resolution operator will help us to resolve the scope of the private data members outside the class. This is the example of the class. Now we can create the object of this class using a main function. Let us define the main function over here, the void main. And now I will create the object of the student class, student s. I will invoke these number function that is get student put student. So let us invoke s dot get student now when this function will be invoked we will be here the roll number name age and percentage for the student s will be input and in the similar fashion we can have another member function that is s dot put student which will display the information of the student so this is the complete program implementing the scope resolution operator while implementing the abstraction so this is the syntax to use the scope resolution operator. We have to specify the return type, then class name, then a scope resolution operator, then the member function with the argument list. And here the full body of the function will be there, which may use the private data members outside the class. So this is how we have implemented the abstraction for both the data members and the member function for a class. Let us write the syntax to use the scope resolution operator to define any member function outside the class. The syntax goes here. First of all, we have to specify return type, class name, then scope resolution operator, then member function containing argument list. And then we will be having the whole definition for the function like that. So this is how the scope resolution operator is used. There is another use of scope resolution operator. If we are having a global variable and in the same program, we are having some local variables with the same name as that of the global variable, then the scope resolution operator can be used to access the global variable anywhere in the program. If we are having an integer global variable and just initialize the value by 10, this is a global variable. In main, I will be having another variable n having value as 20. In C++, we can declare the variable anywhere in the program. We can have another block and we can have another variable with the same name in the inner block. Let us define that. Starting with the new block over here, if we are having another variable m and if I initialize this with n, let us define another variable with the same name n here we are having three n's one is the global one is in the outer block and one is in the inner block and just assign another value to this variable now if i try to print all these values so if i write m is equal to m slash n will print the new line then if i write c out n is equal to if i want to print the value of n like that i can print this slash n will print the new line and lastly, if I print C out and I want to print the value of that global variable, then I must have to write scope resolution operator with the variable n and this will print the value of the global variable n. If I run this program, then what will be the output? Let us specify that this will be the inner block. So I'll just specify C out inner block the output for the inner block will be so this will print the inner block first and then 
this will print m is equal to what is the value of m when this statement is executed the global variable n will be having value of 10 and inside the main function i have declared another variable and the value is 20 so here in this scope the value of n will be 20 and if i go in this inner block then the value of n 20 will be assigned to the variable m and hence if i try to print this m the value 20 will be printed if i try to print the value of n now this n is actually the local n in this scope in this inner block the value of the local n is 30 and hence the value 30 will be printed this third statement will print the value of the global variable though there are two n variables one is the local variable and another is the global variable so here this n will represent the local n that is the inner n and this n using a scope resolution operator will represent the global variable and hence the value colon colon n will be displayed as 10 because it will print the value of the global variable now outside the outer block if i try to print outer block if i try to print the value of n and if i try to print the global value or global variable n then the value will be can be accessed using the scope resolution operator like that so this will be the program in the next part this will print the outer block and then if I try to print this n, this was the inner block and this is the outer block. The inner block has a variable n and the scope of this variable will be from this curly braces to this curly braces. This will be in the inner block. But as soon as I come in the outside or uh, outer block, the scope of this variable will be alive. And here this n will display the value of this outer n that is the local variable for this scope and will print n as 20 so this will print the value 20 and again i am trying to access the global variable n and hence the output for the global variable n will again be the value 10 so this will be the output so whenever we are having some local variables with the same name as that of the global variable then at any time if we want to access the global variable the scope resolution operator is used to access that global variable so this is all about the scope resolution operator please do like share and comment subscribe my video channel don't forget to press the bell icon thank you